Okay. I'm on here. Oh, it looks a lot better than it looked before. Hey guys. Doing a little, uh, I don't think I have anybody on here yet, but I'm doing a little, uh, going through my tech box little thing here. I'm getting a lot of people that ask me this all the time and want me to just show them what I fish and show my baits more one-on-one. -on -one. If I know my shows, I just kind of show them really quick. Got anybody on? I got somebody on. Hey, who's there? Yeah, that's a little impromptu. I'm here at, uh, I'm here at Pino. Want a cool backdrop. I set it up here. You like that though? Nice shot of lake behind me. It's been a miserable day. It's been 20, 30 mile an hour winds all day. It's finally settled down. I haven't really fished. Didn't really have any place I could go to fish because it's been terrible. Hello from Canada. Well, Canada, you're probably used to the cold. That's what we're getting here right now. Just barely cold winter. Suddenly, it was really nice, and now it's bitterly cold here. Had like 15, 20 mile an hour winds. Well, if you're in Canada, it's probably not cold in the 50s. But we're not used to that. I mean, we're used to that, but not really. Um, so yeah, let it get popular. Who else is on here? Hi from Marina. Well, if you're from Marina, then you know it's been really cold today. <laughs> uh, I'm on here and I'm gonna do a little sit down for you guys. Whoa, got somebody else on. <laughs> Loud to catch bass. <coughs> Nothing today. I fished for like 15 minutes. Right now you can see behind me, it's nice. It just sat down though. It's been howling, there were white caps here, been blowing like crazy. I'm trying to find a place to set up to do this because there were a lot of people out here. I don't know why who would come out here and try to have a picnic in 20, 30 mile an hour winds and 50 degree weather, but they were doing it. I'm going, I'm going. And what I'm going to do, man, my fan, it's, my fingers are stinging, it's cold. I want to go through and just show you guys what I use on a daily basis to catch bass. Here it's dark, it's night time. Not quite there yet here. Got about another, uh, I don't know, let me check. I think they're open till six. I'm hoping. Yep, got enough time I think to go through my tackle box and show you guys what I fish, show you guys my baits. I don't have a lot of stuff in here. I'm, I mean, I only have the two poles. That's all I take with me when I go fishing. I'm not one of those million pole guys. But like I said, a lot, a lot of uh, viewers, people I talk to, they see my baits. And in my shows, I try to keep them quick and try to keep them, you know, tight and kind of. Uh, right now, it's almost five o'clock. Here, here in California. Um, yeah, back to this. I, I keep. I, I'm not, I'm not, like I said, I'm still getting into this live thing and, and showing it live. Uh, last time I was fishing, I want to do some fishing here live, but I want to go through and show you guys some of this stuff. And little, I mean, I don't carry that much stuff with me. I mean, I have four of these little things that I carry in my box. Some of them are plastics. I have some other plastic stuff here. But I just kind of wanted to sit down and let you guys know that you don't have to carry a million things with you <laughs> when you go fishing. And to catch a lot of fish and always catch fish, it's, I keep it very simple. The, like I said, the two poles. But I'm going to kind of go through and show you some of the stuff I carry, some of the baits, give you some close-ups of them. Take the time to 
not just go, hey, I'm using this, and then fish and catch a bunch of fish on it. It's nice to see me catch fish on it, but I'm gonna slow down and, and go through and show you some of this stuff. 7.57. Yeah, no, we're a little bit before that. Dark there already? Okay, first off, I'm just gonna start out going through. Well, first off, this is the box I carry. It's a little, it's the Okeechobee. It's, it's a little box. It doesn't carry much stuff. But enough stuff that I can catch fish pretty much anywhere I go and all the time. And I carry a lot of uh, sort of bobbleheads. Bobbleheads. These are a really good thing. Biffle bug or the biffle head. That's what it is when I say I'm using a, uh, our, it's our version. We sell these, it's a bobble head. It's basically a, a jointed jig head. Always have those in the three, six, three eighths and these are quarter ounce. These are really good. Throw my plastics on them. Uh, and then I have a bunch of the uh, jig heads here. Uh, I've fly fished before, um, just on a little setup I did to fish a local creek, six foot pole, but it was some fly line on it, and I was, I got down, I mean, it's, it's fun, I, I know the whole technique and getting it out there and letting it drift and getting it in the current and the puddles, and I just, there's not much area to do it around here, there's a guy that comes here all the time and practices his fly fishing around here. I don't, someday I'll do a show on it. I'll figure something out. There's a lot of, actually, uh, Carmo River and some other places that have people that do a lot of fly fishing and uh, maybe I can hook up with some of them and get out there and do some fly fishing. But right now, I'm, like I said, I'm trying to just show you guys what I carry with me and, and how it's, it doesn't have to be that complicated. Uh, I didn't really fish today. It was too windy. Like I said, right now it looks nice behind me, but it's been 20, 30 mile hour winds all day. And uh, so I decided I'd just come here and want to do this live thing for you guys and uh, take a day off from fishing. Plus, it's been bitterly cold for California for the last like two weeks and it's sort of shut everything down and the bass have gone dormant. So, kind of going to go through this stuff for you guys. Ooh, six guys on. Thanks. Um, this is the only weight size I carry with me as far as a bullet head. You guys might be surprised. Everyone always carries tons of different size weights and that sort of thing. <clears throat> I whittle it down to a 316. I've been fishing for 40 years, and the drop shot... I fish drop shot a lot. People see me doing a drop shot a lot. And I only started doing a drop shot, what, 2012. First time I ever threw a drop shot was 2012. So I've been doing it for, what, six years now? And I've done the 1 8th. I've done the, the quarter. I've done the 1 16th. But for what I do and the way I do it and what works the best is just a 3 16th. So that's all I carry with me. I have some one eights in here somewhere, but that's only because they were out of three sixteenths and I couldn't find them anywhere. But yeah, that's that's the only way I carry. Even if I do a Texas rig or something, which I actually rarely do with the weight these days. And another thing, guys, I'm getting older. I'm 51 now, and I've been fishing. I know that's not like old, but I'm fishing 40 years. I have arthritis. In, in both my thumbs, I have uh, uh, wrist problems. It's hard for me to actually fish a lot of the techniques I used to, like high speed crank and all that. It's like I can do it, but I just it wears it my thumbs, everything. So I've kind of whittled it down at this point to things that are uh, simpler and easier for me with with the uh, the plastics. That's why I did plastics a lot of stuff where it's slower. I'm also having issues with my arm right now. Like, if I push on myself this way, my arm totally kills. And it's just from the repetitive motion. I'm having issues with my elbow. 
I mean, fishing is supposed to be fun and comfortable, but when you do it competitively and you do it consistently and you do it a lot, there's a lot of issues that can start happening. And, and I'm just kind of getting to the age that it's all starting to catch up with me. So that's kind of why a lot of times I, I do more of the slower baits and just the plastics and, and, and the jigs and stuff that's at this point easier on my body and easier on my thumbs and my joints. So that has a lot to do with why I kind of carry the stuff I do and fish the stuff I do. But uh, back to this here, at 3 sixteenths, um, for me as far as when you're on shore and you're casting uh, a drop shot a lot and not just straight up and down, just the way you work it and the way it keeps the bait and the, the tautness of the line, um, th that way it just seems to be the best way for it. And as far as hooks I carry, uh, I have these. These are the uh, these are owner the, the cutting point. But I'm telling you guys, I've used a lot of drop shot hooks. Uh, the best hooks for you guys is the uh, mosquito hook, the number two. It's I don't know. They just it, even with liller baits and everything else, it seems to work. It hooks them the best. I've tried the four. It's the one I was complaining about earlier because that's all I could get a hold of. The number twos were out everywhere. I can only get the number four. I was losing a lot of fish on it. You can hook up with the number two mosquito hook. I've used a Gamagatsu. I've used a lot of other drop top hooks in the past four or five years I've been using them. Uh, that's another thing. I'll get into that. I don't use braid. Only a mono guy. I don't like uh, monofilament. What the? Heck? What's going on? I'm setting up, and oh, I guess it is sprinklers coming on. It's like I don't need this background noise. <laughs> Last show I did here, there was a, a guy that was doing a leaf blower. There was a guy that was doing a a, a weed whacker. There was a dog howling the whole time. It's freaking almost evening here. <laughs> Suddenly all these sprinklers are coming on, making a bunch of nod noise behind me. <laughs> so anyway, back to the hooks. I'll, I'll get this whole little thing about... Uh, use big, big Easy's? Big, I don't know what those are. Big Easy's? I'm, I'm not sure I might. Oh, gambler baits. Uh, no, I have all my own baits that I use. I mean, that's what I'll be getting into when I show you this. I have a few that I don't use, some of the hard baits and some of the other stuff, but almost all the plastics and everything you see me using and, well, our terminal tackle, like our, our jig head and the bobble head, and that, it's all our own baits. I mean, CCP custom baits. It's, I've kind of whittled it down after all these years of using other stuff that I kind of got tired of using lot of stuff that I knew worked and that was something that always worked for me and that that's why I kind of started using all our own baits. Oh, Florida. Well, you're probably not as cold as we are here. Florida, I mean, it's, why well, I said it earlier in the stream, but it's, it's been cold here. Too. Like I said, right now it looks nice, but it's been 20, 30 mile an hour winds today and 50 degrees the wind chill feels I mean, probably more like 40 or whatever so that's kind of the terminal tackle stuff 316 south that's all I take with me um, a number two actually yeah number two mosquito hook this is the number two um, actually this is number four but this is the owner but number four is a little bit bigger and then number four that's the mosquito hook but that's what I use on that and the other thing is our flickum jig head our flickum jig head and this is on our drop and stick our little three inch stick bait <laughs> yeah yesterday was just as windy as today here and this is another bait that I use all the time our drop and stick um, it's 
pretty much almost the only bait I use now um, when I'm drop shotting. That's our little, our little drop and stick, three inch stick bait. Other company like Bass Pro Shops has one. I think Senko now is actually doing a three inch. Ours is a little stiffer because I like to use them on the Flickum jig head. Whoa. And this is a uh, 1 16th ounce. I said, this is what I call the big three inch when you guys see me. And I said, it's, it's basically more, it's more hardware than it is actual bait. But this thing works like crazy. I keep trying to tell people, try this little 16th ounce Flickum jig head with a little teeny three inch stick bait. Uh, yeah, I'll get into my poles uh, at the end of this. But uh, I use Abu Garcia's as far as my reels and uh, my poles. I like, um, well, I'll get into that later. So yeah, uh, like I said, one of the things, that stuff, but I carry this. This thing is great. Little three inches thing we use on the drop shot. And guys, when you nose hook, nose hook like that. I happen to have this one sitting in here. Don't do it all the way through. I'm sure you can see that. It's halfway in and up. That holds it better. That makes it run through the water better. It's way better than going all the way through. Plus, it keeps it weedless. That's why I can throw this thing and take it through brush and all that. When you go all the way through an exposed hook, plus it lets it turn, it doesn't keep it as straight as you want it when it's coming. But it keeps it, everyone's like, how are you throwing your drop shot through all that brush? Or are you getting hooked up all the time? I'm like, no, I do it like this. It keeps it weedless. But that's the way to do it. Half in and up, guys. Half in and up. I don't know how many times I tell people that. I still see them and they go all the way through it. It helped it that twists it more and all that, but yeah. Yeah, these are a big deal, guys. Trust me, if you want to throw something on drop shot, I know you can, people like to throw uh, robo worms and, and worm style. I used to do that, and I used to have a lot of little, uh, our cut tails and our blade worms we used to do the four inch. But these little three inch stick baits, seem to totally outperform on the drop shot almost 90% of the time I mean I might not be getting hits on these and I will go and say oh maybe I need to try a worm style I won't get hits on those and I'll go back to these and I'll catch some fish on them you guys really got to get into these little little stick I mean the Senko hello the Senko catches everything and yeah it's usually like five inch and six inch but they go a little with these little three inch stick worms and the way it comes through the water now, it's just a great, great bait. I mean, if I had one bait for that I could only fish for a year, it'd probably be this little thing, believe it or not. And we also have another thing I carry with me. This is our little, uh, this is our rip minnow. I often fish it and mostly fish it on our little horse head underspin. Our horse head underspin actually comes with a uh, willow leaf, little willow leaf blade. I actually have this one modified with the Colorado. I'm going to do a tip tricks on that. It's uh, for running it shallower and stuff, but I will do that in later tips and tricks of how to modify this thing with an actual Colorado instead of a willow because everything comes with willows. Um, I also carry these. Well, this is our bobblehead again. But this is our swim flip craw. It's the one that I flip here in Pinot a lot. And uh, it works great. Don't need a skirt. I actually have some of these bobbleheads you can put a skirt on. But these things are great. I mean, Tommy Biffle uses just slow rolls these. I flip with them, they're really good flipping. I'm also gonna do a tips tricks on that, I'm telling you guys uh, the best way to flip soft plastics. It's not a pegged way uh, with the Texas rig. It's actually on a structure type jig. There's a lot of reasons why I'll get into them more when I do the tips tricks on that. So that's, you can see it right here. 
have a lot of these. These are all our drop-in sticks. The majority of that. This is another one. Plastics. Um, same kind of deal. A lot of drop-in sticks in here. But I also do carry a few different jigs with me. Anyway, this winter, for some reason, the fish aren't on a jig bite. I haven't caught hardly anything on the jig. It's all been drop shot and flicking. Last year, uh, in the winter, the jig bite was pretty good, but for some reason this winter, I don't seem to want that profile for some reason. But I have some of these in here. These are our, uh, let me see, here's one. These are our quarter ounce flipping jig. Uh, still haven't put these on the website for sale. I have made up, I have a bunch of them to do. I've been focusing more on doing these videos than I have been making baits lately. But yeah, carry some of these quarter ounce jig. And you guys will notice this is something I've done a tips and tricks on. See how short that is? Hook weedless. I keep it very short. I keep it so it just keeps thing. I don't I don't like them when they're like way up here long I cut them so they just miss the bait and this is uh, it's just got a little craw trailer this is, this is a trailer I might introduce but actually I often use well the, the swift flip craw on these instead of this little craw trailer but I often carry some of these with us and that plus diesel these things are great. Are great. These are little, our little finesse. You can see if I can get right there. Little finesse jigs. It's a 116 ounce. It's a bullet head. Uh, non weed guard on it. It's just a straight. Uh, like I said, these things usually in the winter, these things work really well. For some reason, this winter they're just not on jig bite. It's really weird. Jigs are supposed to be really good in the winter, but they're just not there. But this little thing, how light it is, and it has a straight up eye on it. And when you do it, it lifts it because it's so light, it's really easy, and you can just really call it. Carry those, I often carry. Ah! All right, I have some issues here, all stuck up. This is our old jitter jig. Bladed jig, bladed jigs are always good. Always carry those with you. Um, these are our original. Has a big toe head with the the same way the chatterbait was done. Then they initiate their patent on them and can't do them this way. Now I have to do them. I haven't introduced them because of this because I'm still working on it. Uh, the eye is turned. You have to have a split shot, then the blade. Uh, works good for slow rolling, but. I don't know, I just haven't played with it enough for um, seeing it. And, and with that the split shot and the blade, if you run it faster, it has a tendency to roll it. And I'm a little worried because this, the way it is, is really strong and there's no way the fish is going to bust it. But when you hit the split ring, that's a weak link between the blade. The only thing that's holding the blade to that is the split ring. Tried some of them, but if it's a big fish and it pulls hard and whatever, it could actually straighten the split ring and you lose a fish because it's a weak link between the blade and the split ring. I've tried using some of the heavy duty split rings, but uh, since they're thicker, they bind with the hole and so it, it kind of catches. So I'm, that's kind of why I haven't reintroduced this jig jig. I wish I could still do it this way because it was an amazing bait. But damn you, Chatterbait, for cutting us all off from doing that. So that's sort of mostly what I carry as far as plastic. Maybe this is small stuff. I also have, carry a lot of these. These are a gotcha flick stick. Um, it's a stick bait. It's five and a quarter inch stick bait, but it's stiff. I don't know if you can see that. I'm, I'm trying to get an idea. There you go. It's different, like the Senkos and all those, uh, when you hold them, they'll sit like that. This is designed to be stiffer uh, because when you have the weight, it creates more 
uses it's a pullback and it gives it a lot more of a shaky action than if when you have the weight and you do the little sort of slap in the slack thing it'll just kind of whoa, whoa. this just keeps it kind of vibrating which is a better idea for them oh this is green pumpkin red i have them in uh this is the watermelon red chartreuse. I have them in, uh, let's see, I carry some in Junebug. I carry some in, uh, this is, uh, and at this one we're not doing any more money makers, kind of brown and green. I have them in uh, black and blue. Um, but actually, in my little pocket here, with my other soft plastic in that. That's all that's in here. That's all. Have them, uh, this one's just straight green pumpkin, uh, pumpkin pepper. But like I said, I don't, that's why I kind of wanted to show you guys what, what I carry with me in a day. Because most people, most bass fishermen would be like, dude, you don't have much variety. You don't have much choice. Like, why do you only carry that little bit? Because it works. Because I always catch fish on it and it works. That's why I carry just this very simple little stuff because it's, it's basically high percentage baits and high percentage places. And I've whittled it down over 40 years of fishing in that to this, just this little bit of it. I mean, I have more. I have some other stuff I will show you. And I also have some more traditional fast stuff and, and, and cranks and that that I carry with me. But just a, just a few, just very select little baits. So anybody still watching? Okay, okay, good. Sorry, <laughs> I know I'm kind of talking a mile a minute with this and all that, but I just, I, I don't think I have, well, I only have till that sun goes down, if you can see it behind me. Okay, got some, I'm, I'm not that, I got another like 40 minutes, so I don't have to rush so much. <sighs> a little sporadic here, guys, but, but stay with me. This will help. I swear it'll help it at some point. Yeah, like I said, this is, I mean, I have a lot of them. I, I carry a lot, but it's the same. And these I usually run, I mean, I run them on, I run them on this, or flick them jig head, most of the time. Um, uh, actually, well, well, this one I run on a drop shot. But all of these bigger ones than that, the only way I fish them is on the flick. I don't fish them weightless. These are designed for the flickum. Uh, usually on the eighth ounce, I do them with these, sometimes three sixteenths. But it's, it's basically more action, more action, more action on the wacky. But when you go wacky and weightless, most people I see them, they just kind of pull it through the water. Every once in a while, they kind of jerk it. I said, this is more of a, a shaky head, a horizontal shaky head. I also nicknamed it the bat wing because it kind of looks like a bat wing as it's going through the water. But it's it's just, I don't know, the same, I, I, even with pros I fish behind when they're throwing a weightless, wacky Senko and I'm watching them just like no action and they kind of pull on it once in a while and kind of, this thing, I, I don't know, it's just, I can move it faster, I can keep it, it's like a really wild action compared to weightless. So that's why I use it so much, because it's just, if there's fish around, and this, the way this thing works, and it's it's action and all that, and how it, it basically does that in the water the whole time, while you're bringing it in. That fast and all that, it's just whacking, like, compared to where the Senko were, it just kind of, na, 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 lethargy. <laughs> yeah, it's just, but that, that's why I'm telling you, you guys got to try this on the flicking thing. Um, okay, so yeah, mostly these. I said in the four and the five. But I also carry with me on my daily is our flipping swim flip craw. I showed you the one that I had on the bobblehead. But this is it. This is really good. It's black and blue, standard color. I don't carry many colors. I have black and blue. I have black and red, 
Uh, that one was Alabama Craw, the kind of green pumpkin with the orange. Some like squirrel sneaking up on me from behind. Oh no, it's a little bird. And these are really great. We already have them on our website, they're for sale. But they're solid all the way to here. This is solid, and then just right here is hollow. I know there's a pecker craw on that, but there's it's only solid at the very tip, and it's hollow all the way through. These are solid till this till the joint to the head, and right here. And that way, when you're working them and you stop, they stand up. And when you work them and you stop, and they stand up, especially on the, the bobblehead or our, well, our structure. It's a structure jig, like a biffle bug. We call it the bobblehead. But yeah, I carry some of those. And I also carry, which actually, I haven't introduced these yet. These are our flipping tube. These things are really good. You can also run them out in the open on a bobblehead or a traditional tube. But they're double dipped. They're really thick. Uh, these things last. I'm back. You're back and I'm still here. <laughs> um, yeah, they're double dip. They're really strong. The company I get them from, I have make them for me. Uh, last year, suddenly they put them all. Uh, they had them on clearance, and I thought they were going to get rid of them or going to produce them anymore. But evidently, I don't know. People weren't ordering them or having them produced or whatever. But they're still offering them, so I'm going to do some more of these. Oh, and there's another thing, our pocket crop. I forgot about the pocket crop. I have some of them in here. Uh, actually, I think they're in this one. Do I have any? Oh, here we go. Also, fish some of these. These are our pocket craw. You can see how soft that is. How look at, I'm holding it to the end, and look at how limber it is with those things. This is another th good thing, too, to, to run on the drop shot. You know, like I said, you nose hook it, and you just work that thing along on a drop shot. Um, it's really good, usually. I mean, I, I use it all the time, but in the winter, it's usually really good. But for some reason this year, anyway, when I catch them on a crawdad bite, they don't want anything. That they don't, they want, don't want a jig. They don't want the tube crawl on the bottom. They want swimp of craw. I haven't wanted this. They've only wanted, you know, a little drop and stick and the flick it. I said it's just been it's been a really weird winter here. Even when they're on a crawdad bite, they don't want anything that looks like a crawdad. They want a plastic little work. I have those. I have more of the uh cream in here. See a whole bunch of tubes. Great color for Pinno. If you're a Pinno fisherman you're in the area, uh, this is uh, PP&J. Basically the green pumpkin. It's got the purple orange light with the purple tail. Killer, killer <laughs> uh, flipping bait uh, for Pinno. And uh, I have a tips and tricks on that about fish profile first. Uh, crawdad profile when flipping. It's really good. We'll get into it now. More of the uh, swamp of craws in here. And if you go far enough, oh, I actually carry with me number one bait of choice. Uh, I said if I only had one bait I could fish for a whole year in every situation, it would be this little three inch drop and stick. I would have enough confidence that I could fish. 365 days a year and only use this one bait. I would use it like this, the big three inch on the flicking, and I would use it on a drop shot. And I bet you I could catch fish every single day, or at least have a chance to catch fish every single day for a whole year. If that was the only bait I used, that would be it. That and the flicking. Uh, oh yeah, I know it's been open. I guess they didn't close it all winter. It's, I, I just put a show up uh, yesterday. 
of me with one of my viewers out here on the boat. And anyway, there was a lot of wind and everything earlier. There were the, like three boats out today. Yeah, they were supposed to close it all winter, but no, it's open. Another thing I carry with me is our buzz bait, our killer buzz. This little fun, squeaky thing. It's three eighths. Um, always carry it. Buzz baits are always good. I, I tried it the other day. I have a show that's coming up. Uh, I tried it anyway. 50 degree water, but buzz baits are a good cold water bait when when it starts getting to 50, the pre spawn. Uh, not just summertime and when it's fast, those buzz baits are really good. Um, it's one of my favorite colors. I know most people be like white. I usually carry one that's white. I might have it. I think I have one in here. And I'll show you. But uh, black and red. I, I love the black and red. I have a little curly tail uh, grub on it. Just curls right at the end. But uh, Another thing always carry with me. I don't use it much. I'm using it with the plastics and the more. But I always have things that if a situation arises, I have something that's pretty versatile and something that works in a, in a wide range. I don't have, you know, oh, they're on a certain bite, a specific thing. I have something that's more generic. Get your buzz bait, old school generic. Works really good. And then the last thing I have in here, besides my pliers that I just lost, another thing, always carry pliers. Um, <laughs> yeah, thanks, yeah, I know it's doing good, or was doing good. Cold weather has really shut it down. I actually have I actually have something with hard baits. <laughs> something with with like jerk baits and I have crank baits in here and I have rattle traps in here and I have spinner baits in here. But that's it. I don't have like five boxes of crank baits. I don't have five boxes of jerk baits. I don't have, you know, all that. I just have this one little box. Just with with like I don't know how many lures are in there. 15? <laughs> That's it. And as far as the crank, oh, these things are all just really, really tangled. See, it's been so long since I've used any of these things. But they're pretty much. Oh, here we go. This is a really good crankbait, guys. If you want one crankbait, I mean, we are doing our own, but it's a little bit bigger than this. But I just, this thing is great. It's not really actually a traditional square bill. This is the Bandit 100 series. And this is in a, a color I call, well, it's Flame of Grape. I call it Snow Cone. It's kind of gray on top with a purple and blue flake. It's got orange chartreuse or day glow orange under the thing and chartreuse on it. I got a nine pounder in Pinto on this this lure. I think it was this, yeah, yeah, this lure. This lure caught me a nine pounder. And it catches me a lot of, of fours and fives. But the 100 Bandit series. Uh, I've used them not only here in Pinto, I've used them in Margarita, I've used them in Lopez, I've used them in Kachuma, I've used them in, in Clear Lake, I've used them in the Delta. The little, they have the 100, 200, and 300 series, but this, this is the best one of all of them. I know it's teeny and it's small, but this thing is great. Ah! Ow. Sorry guys, when I get up close, obviously I'm reading comments. Yeah, the crop happy. Yeah, and well, that's kind of like our swim flip crop, right? Kind of idea. Yeah, back to this. 100 Series Bandit. Uh, another one I use besides our own, which, well, this is our own. Nope, that's not ours. I don't even have any of my own cranks in there. I just haven't been cranking a lot. I haven't cranked in probably the last couple of years. 
Uh, another thing I always carry is these. Chrome and blue. This is actually Cornell Spot. Love the spot. Love the way that it's got the, the way it's made. It's really good for when you're reeling, not just straight fast, but when you do the jerking and let it drop. Jerking, let it drop. The way these things are designed. The kind of fatter. Ah! It's got kind of the fatter bottom and those little dimples on the side. It's a really good real jerk and let it drop, real jerk. It just gives it a lot more action when you do that than when you do the same thing with a rattle trap. It's a lot slimmer, straighter profile. These seems really good for the jerk and drop. I always carry those with me. I actually have, really should have untangled all this stuff. Always carry one of these. Light it keeps better. It keeps going on and off. I think it's because of the sun. Yeah. Anyway, this right here, little Zara Spook Jr. Uh, this is the only color I use. The baby bass or the Florida bass. I think it's Florida bass. Some of the baby bass. Baby bass. So it's kind of the clear one with the plate in the middle. Uh, it, pretty much the only one I use. I also use sometimes the. Uh, it was well, they don't make it anymore. It was clear with a silver plate with a blue head. That one's really good, or just straight clear. I don't use any of the shad colors or any other. I mean, this little baby bass or Florida bass one, it's pretty much the only one you need. I mean, it works. <laughs> oh, here we get the lighting's better. You can see that thing. I've caught so many five pound bass on this little thing. <laughs> Even I also use it in the same thing as the real, the actual super spook, but this little three inch one seems to work better majority of time if you want to catch more fish and it gets the big ones. Um, I do have some always carry some jerk baits. Not many, just a few. Uh, this one is traditional silver and black. I have this little get it out. This little bomber. It's pretty much clear black with a little bit orange on it. Uh, when I go to a jerk bait, I pretty much chrome and blue, or actually uh, gold and black. The clown. Uh, the uh, Spithwick's clown is the color I like the most and easy to use in all situations. I like these silver ones too. Or with this, something that's more clear. See, I don't carry, I just carry something that's kind of light. Uh, depending, well, depending on the bait. In, in, in crankbaits, I usually do something that's light, something that's medium, and something that's dark. And pretty much all my other baits, like spinnerbait, buzzbait, light, medium, and dark. Um, I just don't carry 30 different colors of each bait. I just keep something like I have a crankbait in here. Uh, well, it's all stuck up, but I do have the crawdad color, um, rattle trap. Uh, I have a red eye shad in here. Like I said, you see how nice fences I've used these things. They're all so stuck together I can't even get to them. <laughs> it's just kind of, it's like here I am trying to do a show and everything I'm trying to show you is all stuck together. Ah, oh, sorry, I didn't get to read that one. Wait, let me go back. Eh, it won't show it to me. There we go. Um, I can't really say right now, um, go live, I would say that, I mean, going live is, I said I'm addicted, I'm just only the fourth time I've gone live, it's, and this is a little sporadic, um, I was kind of, I'm kind of scattered because I had things planned, I had a certain place I wanted to do it, and then a bunch of people showed up, and they were in the spot, and wind was blowing and I was worried about oh I can't get spot where, I can, where the wind is good and all of that stuff so it's anyway this is planned in a way but live you can never really plan it because you're live you can't just say oh we'll cut that out and recut but yeah for a channel I think and especially now because it just came out a year ago the live thing is something that's going to get channels going you got to go live you got to figure out how to go live and not be afraid to go live I was afraid for a while. I've, I've had this camera for like over a month and I was just worried about it. Couldn't, it was 
was just worried about how, how it works, the setup, and I'm not a phone guy and all that, but yeah, as far as the channel, and, and especially now with all the changes and everything, and the fact that the live is the newest thing, I mean, I, I was I was at the pier and a guy goes, I'm, oh, I'm going live, he goes, oh, you're on Facebook, I'm all, no, I'm going live on YouTube, and he goes, oh, I didn't know YouTube did live, so yeah, it's it's always getting on something that's, that's new, and getting on, even a lot of the bigger channels that still aren't into uh, the live thing, it's probably because they can't add their beats and, and do all their slow-mo and their cuts, they gotta be, they gotta be real and they gotta talk to people and they can't just, uh, oh, edit it and cut it out, they gotta be who they are and genuine, but they gotta do it live, <laughs> which I think for a lot of people, they like to script it and edit it and add their beats and make it look all cool. And when you're going live, it's you, it's live. Uh, this is the Moto Z2 Force. It's actually, evidently, they're sold out. I got this one and the place I got it is now sold out and everybody's wanting it. Oh, another thing. Um, wow, guys, I, I really gotta, I'm on a time budget because they close, they close this place in 20 minutes. So, um. I'm going to be taking this to the next level really soon. There's a mod for this thing, and I'm going to be able to go basically live virtual reality, which is going to be really cool. They have a mod on here, and it'll be 360. And while I'm filming, if you're on your phone, you can look around me and be able to check everything out. Uh, it's really cool. It's I, I don't have the mod yet. It's on. It just came out. It's, um, they have actually have it on sale now. I'm gonna try and grab one in the next couple of weeks because I haven't seen anybody yet do at least a fishing show live with it so you can go virtual reality or even like put on your goggles and be like, hey, like right now you could turn around and go, oh, look at those trees behind me. Oh, look at those birds. Or, or if I'm not catching anything, you can sightsee. Especially the pier with all the, like you can people watch with the tourists and everyone. But that's, Coming. Hopefully, um, I don't know. I, I just don't have the money for it right now. It's kind of an expensive uh, mod to add to this thing. But hopefully, within the next week or two, hopefully, I can get a hold of one and start testing and doing some really cool 360 virtual reality live feeds, which would be a lot of fun. Um, all right, back to this. I don't have much time. Um, I also carry our spinner baits, our single blade. I have um, uh, I have some. I actually have. We'll introduce them on our site some double blade willow leaf uh, spinner baits. I've always caught them since the '80s, since I first started. Little single Colorado blade like this has been my go to spinner bait. I produce the other ones. I noticed nobody else sells these single blades unless it's a huge one that's meant for night. Uh, I have all the bodies, all the thing, and the skirts, but I think I'm just gonna do a giveaway and give them all away the bodies so you guys can add a skirt and that because I just have no. I don't know, I've caught fish on them in the past, but it's just, that's the thing everybody throws, the double wheel leaf, double wheel leaf, double wheel, three eighths out, blah, 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 and that's why I think these things, the little single color kind of, and this only quarter ounce, you might do one in three eighths too, um, and always add a plastic trailer, I do tips and tricks on that, I don't know why people don't put trailers on their spinner baits, they put trailers on jigs and, and buzz baits, and jitter jigs and everything else but spinner baits they never put this little plastic grub type but that's a whole other issue um, I also have a popper in here it doesn't have any hooks on it but it's a little popper um, there was one it was going to be called our better pop someone I was playing with this is one of our it's kind of a cool ghost bluegill kind of color they're always good because they're old school. A lot of people don't throw them anymore. Um, 
But yeah, that's just sort of it for my, I mean, that's it for my hard baits. I don't, like I said, I don't have, I mean, most bass fishermen would have four or five. Uh, I'm going to do the rods right now and, and my reels. As I said, I think I only have about, I only have about 10 minutes and I got to be out of here. So, sorry guys. I need to, whoops, loosen things. I need to kind of put some of this stuff back in here while I'm talking to you. I don't want to get in trouble. Don't want to get locked in. I did say they were changing it to 6 o'clock. Starting on the 16th. That's past 16th. I plan to get this started earlier, but the wind was such a pain. And uh, there were people everywhere that was out of the wind that I wanted to set up so I could do a live feed without a full bunch of wind shear. All right. Um, sorry, guys. Scramble for the end here. Okay, finally the poles. What I carry. I said I only carry the two. Abu Garcia, the Aura SX are uh, the reels I have on there. I have a review I did on them. I've also done a good thing on the best rods for 100 bucks. Um, this one is a medium. This is the uh, Bass Pro Shops Tourney Special. And this one is medium heavy. They're both six and a half. Um, I don't like the seven foot rod. Well, also have one on what length rod you should use, six and a half, and, and most people fish sevens, uh, but you're more accurate and there's some other stuff that's better for using actually sub seven foot rods, but like I said, I have a tips and tricks, I'm doing that. But right now, this is a really cheap $18, actually $19 at Walmart. It's the uh, Shakespeare Excursion, it's graphite, uh, medium heavy, it's got little bit of a flimsier tip than a traditional medium but I like it because it's got the short little rod the little handle and uh, it, it, it's not so much for when I'm doing the slow baits but it, it's with it being shorter in that when I'm using the top water and the cranks and that um, with the shorter handle it's actually easier to give it more action easier to feel it um, I said I some tips and tricks and some other stuff I would be doing on the rod and why to use shorter rods at times and longer rods and everything else. And this one, this has the split grip, this thing is incredibly light. Uh, both of these just have the stainless steel inserts. Uh, that's kind of why sometimes when you hear me reeling in, because these things get grooves and stuff in them, uh, it kind of sounds like I have braid or something because it's kind of got that It's because they're not uh, silicone ceramic inserts because they're the uh, stainless steel so anyway I'm using mono sometimes I'm really in the way it sounds because it sounds like I'm using braid um, I only use 12 pound 12 pound on both of these I pretty much over my 40 years of fishing whittled it down to 12 pound and 17 pound when I'm flipping or or uh, sometimes with surface lures like the big spooks and all that uh, 17 pound and pretty much everything else I use the, the crank baits, the spinner baits, the underspin, the rattle traps, the flick in, the drop shot, it's all 12 pound. I tried 10 pound for a while, 10 pound a little too light, and then I tried 14, a little too heavy. It's just I whittled it down to 12 pound. I use uh, Trilene XD. Sometimes when it's a little more abrasive resistance for when around wood or somewhere heavy, but most of the time it's Strand Original or the Strand High Impact or the Trilene uh, Big Game. But 12 pound, I said that's what I would look down to. I'm only a mono guy. Fluoro twists a lot and has some issues, especially when you have to link it. Uh, I forget to 
diet, uh, braid I don't like, yes, it has no stretch, has better feel and all that, but it just, for me, when I'm, it just ended up tangling on itself and getting wrapped around my pole, and I don't know, it, it was just an issue when I went to the braid. So, I'm pretty much strictly just a mono guy. I've used it since the 80s and I've used it for 40 years. It works for me. Um, the way that it floats and doesn't sink, the diameter size, I've just sort of whittled all that down to it, it working for me and the way I fish and how I fish. And it's cheap, it's really strong, you just gotta change it a lot. You can't, and I've done shows on that, I've done tips and tricks about when to change it. But it's just, I don't know, for me, and being a lighter, finessier type fish with lighter weights, it's more natural in the water because it floats compared to the sinking of the braid and the fluoro and the way the baits sink. And it's just, well, I'll have more on that. And I do have, like I said, like 200 tips and tricks that cover a lot of this stuff. But thank you guys so much. Like I said, I just wanted to come out here sit down and just open up my tackle box and show you guys what I carry with me pretty much all the time and what I fished with as I said in my shows I pull it out and I do the little telling you what I'm using and, and, and I'll show them very briefly going oh I'm going to this and just shake it but hopefully with this and, you know after it's uploaded you can go back and, and look through it and it was kind of random so it was very quick but when you got the live and you got people interacting you got comments coming up you, know, you gotta that's what the, the whole thing's about is I want to do it where <laughs> yeah I want to do something that's why I want to do this live instead of just sitting down and going oh this is what I do with my tackle box because this way I get some feedback I get to talk to you guys I get to see that's right I really like uh oh oh the truck's coming with the light flashing uh, I got about 10 minutes but yeah, guys, expect expect a lot more live from me, and I said I'll get more um, when I get to doing it a little more. I'll get more routine with it. But like I said, I I mean, putting a video up and get comments, and then commenting back. For me, why I like the live is because it's like when I'm here and you guys are here with me, and I get your feedback instantly. I get to talk to you. I get to see that you're there, and that's why. Sorry about the camera. I noticed that it keeps kind of on there. <laughs> uh, no, I didn't fish today. It was too windy. Right now, it looks good behind me, but it was 20 to 30 mile an hour winds today. Uh, so I just kind of came here because I want a cool backdrop for this live. I'm uh, so everyone does a live like in their kitchen, and everything else. Being here with that cool scenery behind me. I'm, it's about the aesthetics and it's about, you know, being here and talking to you guys and, and uh, like I said, look uh, look for that, that 360 thing. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna, I just want to take it to the next level. I know YouTube allows it and it's just really cool that I can I can be able to film with you guys and, and while I'm here, you guys can look around in a 360 and see the whole thing. But I'm gonna have to end this. Um, it. I don't know. Here, I'll turn it this way. Can you guys see it over there? See the little uh, little truck over there? A little flashing light. That means it's go time. And uh, I gotta get all this stuff set and stuff over there and get out. But thanks a lot, guys. Thanks for sticking in here and watching my what, like fourth or fifth live. And uh, I'll be back with more. And I'm going to do some more live where I'm actually fishing, not just describing things and talking about things. And uh, thanks so much. And uh, please join us for our next live feed. And please watch our Sunco's Bass fishing show. Give some likes, give some subs. And uh, thanks so much, guys.